Hi, I'm Liz Spencer with Naperville Community Television, and I'm doing a crossover program with my friend Kim White of the Career and Networking Center, uh, which is one of our great programs here on NCTV 17. Kim, why don't you take it from here? Thank you, Liz. My name is Kimberly White. I'm the Executive Director of the Career and Networking Center located in Naperville. And you are joined by John. John, take it from there. Thank you, Liz. I'm John Joseph. I have a marketing background. I've been a CNC board member and volunteer for close to 10 years now. In my volunteer capacity, I help coach those who are in job transition. Great. How about you, Barb? I'm Barbara Schultz, and I'm also on the board of the CNC volunteer. John and I um, co-facilitated a uh, job search work team. And then on the side, I am a career coach, um, freelance writer, and author. Wow. And last but not least, Bruce is joining us, too. Tell us about you. Thanks, Liz. And I, I do want to appreciate and let you know how much we appreciate you having us. Um, I'm also on the board of the Career Networking Center. Um, my volunteer work with the board involves speaking and workshops, as well as to our executive networking group. And for the last 20 years, I've owned uh, an executive search firm. Well, you all are very well positioned to to help us with our conversation today. We are facing something in, that we've never faced before, an unprecedented pandemic that has caused a huge, massive disruption in our in our lives and in, in our economy. So let's get started with what is the state of the job market right now? I'm, I'm happy to jump in on that. I mean, we our, our, our firm has seen a little bit of slowdown. Uh, some some clients who were actively out there searching uh, and recruiting have, have kind of pulled back to that kind of wait and see. But um, we've also seen some some companies take advantage of the time and continue to hire because, you know, like with a lot of things, that too shall pass and business will go on. So from our perspective, and I know um, uh, others here can speak to it as well, but from our perspective, we, we see hiring is, is happening out there and companies are taking a, um, a, di a different approach to uh, how they're doing it. Yeah, I'll just add, I mean, I think the numbers speak for themselves, right? So we had 10 million people file for unemployment. We um, have 701,000 folks um, that are um, in that, you know, have fallen into that uh, the, the unemployment numbers. So the numbers speak for themselves, right? It, there's, a, there's a lot of uncertainty out there around the job market. And so I think to Bruce's point, as we look forward, there's going to be things that are done differently. Um, but there's a lot of uncertainty right now, um, you know, in, in the market. So. Well, one of the programs that uh, Barb Schultz and I, oh, sorry, Kim. One of the Go programs ahead. that Barb Schultz and I facilitate at the CNC is what's called a job search work team. Think of it as an accountability group. And every Monday we get together now virtually with our group, which is average about 15 people, uh, mostly manager, director, VP types of people looking for new opportunities. And from there, you get a sort of sense of the front line of job search right now. Out of that 15 or so, one person received an offer last week. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two that are in final stages. But the consensus is there definitely is a slowdown. They're seeing some of the job opportunity coming off the board. Uh, I think uh, anecdotally that someone said last week, uh, yeah, now recruiters are picking up my phone calls. So, you know, it's sort of another indication that there's a little bit of a slowdown in the marketplace. The one thing I wanted to add to what John said is, um, while we always encourage people to be creative um, in any job market, um, I think we've seen that within our group that um, we've had people pursuing part-time jobs and contracting jobs, and you know, they understand the economic reality of what's going on. So we're, we're encouraged by that. Do you think, is there any... Um, industry or market that's not affected and what are the most affected industries right now? You know, I think the most affected right now um, is going to be our hospitality industry, right? Uh, retail mm -hmm. industry. Um, it's just very clear what's going on. There's um, a lot of hotels that are closing, uh, restaurants that are closing or, or have, have, have reduced their services. So um, that from the get-go is, uh, I would say, you know, what, what we're saying that's directly affected. And of course, small businesses who always have the challenge of funding um, and, you know, not the benefit of deep pockets. Um, you know, we've seen that happen as well. Right. And 
this is different from, say, the financial problems of the 2008 market. How, how is this different and how will this um, change your everybody's viewpoint on how to hire and, and, and keep moving forward? Uh, from from our perspective, I mean, and I know Kim and I were talking about this earlier, that other than, you know, maybe January when we had an idea that it was coming, um, this this really did not have a, a ramp up like the financial crisis did 12 years ago, mm-hmm. where, you know, that 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 was that was building to to an explosion. And, and when it exploded, we expected big unemployment. This was different where it just kind of hit us between the eyes and, and nobody really saw it coming from an employment or economy standpoint. And I think companies have had to adjust, whether if you're going to keep recruiting, if you're going to keep um, your business open, work from home, um, digital, electronic, Zoom. I know John and John and Barb are, 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 using the, are using Zoom like it's their job right now, which is fantastic. And a lot of companies are too in day-to-day business and in their recruiting. Yeah, and I, and I would also add that in the during the financial crisis, I mean, there were not as many industries affected, if you will. Mm-hmm. Now, just about every industry is affected by this um, because we've been shut down. So people, there's you can't go to work unless you're essential. So every in- mm-hmm. industry is is being affected by by this um, COVID nineteen. Kim, you had mentioned that you know the industry is really impacted with hospitality and and all that, but it's also the construction and the architectural side of things. And how is this ripple effect? Because we have become much more of a service country than a mm-hmm. product driven for a majority of us. There's, and, and let's not forget the gig economy. How does that yeah. impact everything you're seeing? Well, if you think about it, so the, the hospitality industry, for instance, so now that we're in this new space where a lot of people are using Zoom, um, you're going to businesses that are still folks that are still doing business, right? They, they now see how you can get things done without flying, you know, employees to another state to hold a meeting. So we're going to see, we're probably going to still see some effect from the hospitality industry where it's just not going to come back the way it used to be. So, and then when you talk about like gig workers, I mean, think about, you know, the Uber drivers and, and all of that. I mean, everyone's affected by mm-hmm. this. And um, things are just going to be done differently from a, from, from a business standpoint moving forward. That sense of difference we're seeing is actually permeating the whole job search process. Mm-hmm. That looking for a job now, it, it, you have to pivot. Uh, it's taken on sort of uh, new aspects than looking for a job three months ago. And people have to be very comfortable with pursuing a new opportunity in a virtual environment. One, one of the things that in one of the workshops that I do at the Career Center is I talk about LinkedIn and networking and that no matter what the economy, no matter what the environment or temperature is outside, always be networking. Always have your LinkedIn tight and, and updated and fresh and edited because it, my, the whole thing with me is job search like it's your job. And if you're going to, mm-hmm. it's your job, you would have things polished and ready to present to a client or your boss. Your LinkedIn should be the same way. And your approach to networking, as you know, as, as John says, you need to, you need to always need to be ready to pivot. And that means not being afraid to network to somebody you don't know, reach out to somebody you do and ask for a connection like you had, like you never have before. Mm-hmm. And um, you had mentioned something about a silver lining and, you know, to to, um, Bruce's point about networking, I I guess I I keep looking at all the positives of um, what's been happening lately. And what I see is that people maybe in a real way understand that they need people um, now that they're in isolation. They may not have fully understood networking. We talk about it till we're kind of blue in the face. And people kind of nod and say, yes, yes. And then they go right back to applying online. I think they really are living that message now. Mm -hmm. And um, so I I think that we'll we'll see a a change in people understanding that strategy that we wouldn't have otherwise seen. Right. So we, if somebody's unemployed, they shouldn't really worry about the fact that there's a pandemic. They should still keep trying to get a job. This is Absolutely. not a time not to be seeking a job. 
No, I mean, you still need to be proactive. You still need to make sure your resume is up to date. You still need to be virtually networking. There's so many things that you could still be doing while this is going on. Um, you know, I, I'm still getting emails from employers that are asking us to post some jobs that they have open. So I know that people are still hiring. So people still need to still need to continue to do the things that they were doing. And you know, I used which, to... go ahead, John. Well, I'm sort of take it through the evolution of the job search process and say that someone unfortunately lost their job because of the pandemic and now they come to the career networking center. How is it that we work with them? How is it that like Barb and I coach people? And, you know, the first thing we start off with is, okay, what's your job search strategy? What, you know, what is it that you want to do? And once we sort of come out with what their objective is, you know, I put my marketing hat on and there's a concept of marketing called the unique selling proposition. What is it that makes you unique? This is like all the building blocks someone needs to go through in job search. And whatever that is at USP, what makes them the unique, now we have to make that come through and we need to work with them. If someone just get, lost their job, let's get their infrastructure in place. Let's get their resume up to date. Let's get their LinkedIn profile up to date. Because those are the building blocks if someone's going to go out and pursue a new opportunity, which they may have to do in this environment, then let's get that foundation in place. And that's how we start to work with them. Mm -hmm. Barb, you were going to say something? I, I always look at uh, a similar situation around the holidays when people say, well, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do anything right now because it's this, this just the absolute worst time. Everybody's busy with Christmas and New Year's and everything. And I always counter it by saying it is the absolute best time because yeah. no one else is doing it. And it's all about planting seeds like John was talking about. There's a lot to be done and there's a turnaround time. So <clears throat> knowing that this is not going to happen overnight, it's, it's just um, time um, lost if you choose to kind of sit on your hands right now. Yeah. Just, just to put a pin in that, I, I, I really think based on what the two of them just said and what we are seeing, so many people are more apt to take your call, respond to your email, respond to your LinkedIn, because we're all sitting at home looking for something mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And we're finding that hiring managers, calendars are easier to break into for candidates to interview. People are responding to LinkedIn and email from us much quicker. So much like, much like uh, Barb said, I mean, this is the time you've got kind of have a captive audience. We're all sitting here waiting for that little ding on our, <laughs> on our computer for an email or a LinkedIn or a phone call. So yeah, definitely yeah, take tactical. advantage of it. Tactically, uh, when you think of your resume or your LinkedIn profile at this point in time, you know, what is it that uh, re recruiters, HR people are looking for? They are looking for that individual who is nimble, who has experienced mm -hmm. working remotely, who has experienced working on diverse geographic te teams. And so the question I would pose to someone, to what degree is that reflected on your LinkedIn profile? To what degree is that reflected on your resume? Can you demonstrate that you can work effectively remotely? Can you demonstrate that you have worked on uh, diverse geographic teams? Because mm -hmm. recruiters and HR folks are going to be looking for that skill set that, and competency in people with whom they're interviewing. Yeah. I was just going to add, Johnny, you just said it. I mean, this is the time right now really to be working on your, your online presence, right? So the, to be creative, um, it's all about self-marketing. I mean, this is the time to do yes. it because to what Bruce just said, people are sitting around. They're, they're looking for stuff to do. So many of us have our iPads and our laptops and computers out and we're, we're on LinkedIn and we're, we're looking. So this is, this is really the time to, to, to be doing that. And yeah, we, are. we get a lot of questions from people in our group about, well, that, that all sounds great, but how do I actually approach an HR person or a hiring manager? And uh, our suggestions so far have been, number one, acknowledge what is going on. I mean, let's all be human. And before you sort of launch into, here's what, you, here's what I need you to do for me, it's always about you know, the other person. And so we say, you know, start out with kind of... Um, just having a, a conversation about what's happening in the world. Um, another thing I think we just said to one of our uh, clients the other day, John, was um, there's also value in just offering uh, ideas um, right now. So if you see things, you know, for example, um, uh, 
emergency response planning and, and you are looking into the future, you've got you know, the benefit of time, why not offer some suggestions to a, a potential employer? Um, you're showing that you're a problem solver, you're creative, you're self-directed, and you know, maybe it's a freebie, but that freebie will be remembered. So time, is, you know, time, time to be entrepreneurial. This is the, the time for job search candidates to stand out, particularly on a LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. One of the very first things they should be doing is taking an assessment of their network. How, how large is their network? How many tier A, tier B, tier C contacts do they have? They should be taking a look and inviting people to virtual coffees, just like we're doing a Zoom. Try to have a virtual coffee of someone because a lot of the folks with whom they want to have this virtual coffee are now working from home where they used to be downtown. And they sort of lost that socialization aspect of being in a large office environment. And there may be a desire to, uh, to have just a virtual coffee with someone to talk about what's going on. So that is a, that's a great opportunity for people who are entering the job search world right now to take assessment of their LinkedIn status, number of contacts, and to build it via virtual coffees. Yeah. So even, and I think the, go ahead. Go ahead, Liz, sorry. No, I was just well, gonna say, I was gonna <laughs> jump in and ask, you know, with all these layoffs and companies are still though looking ahead and trying to make sure that their HR is ready to go when this all mm -hmm. clears up. Is that what you're saying? Because many people are like, well, everybody's laying things, everybody off. Why would they take I my think, call? I, I think there is a tremendous opportunity for job search candidates to stand out on LinkedIn right now. They can increase their visibility on LinkedIn. At a minimum, they should be finding articles, they should be liking. I mean, that's a minimum. That will help to get a little bit more presence. Mm -hmm. They should be sharing content that they, seen, that they see on LinkedIn with, with their network. But more so than that, or, and they should be commenting. So if, sort of if you look at the four levels, like yeah. something, comment, share, but more is authoring unique content. You know, what is it that someone like Bruce or Barbara, when, when, she, when she was an HR professional, uh, that what is it they're looking for? They are looking for unique thinking. They're looking for leadership. So we're encouraging our folks to author pieces for, for their industry coming out of the coronavirus pandemic. Here's what I think are the key marching orders. This is how I'd be <clears throat> communicating with their people. This is the new world order. But enter, you know, advocate, talk about something that's unique. And so you can stand out a little bit more and get greater visibility in the eyes of those who will be looking for job for candidates. To answer your question, uh, Liz, about the what, what is HR doing right now while everybody else is sitting around? Well, we're finding um, a client we have here in Chicago. Um, they're suddenly they're getting us the updated job description that they, they've been promising us. They, they, are, they want to get on the phone with us and tell us about their mm -hmm. new process. Okay, the last interviews are now going to be Zoom instead of flying somebody in to Chicago. So they have that same chance that the rest of us have to take care of all that stuff on their to-do list, mm -hmm. with, whether it's job descriptions or kind of sharpen their HR processes. And seeing candidates come through, this is they're, they're, they're not unlike the rest of us, where seeing candidates come through, they're going to jump at that if it's the right candidate. Um, for a job that they've been either working on or something that's new. So HR is not like unlike the rest of us where they are, they're they looking to fill their calendar as well. They are, and I also think they're looking at their new normal, right? They're, it, things are going to change. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, Bruce, I think they, there's, they have some time to really think about what that's going to look like. And so, um, and this gives them that time to be able to do that. So they're, they're, they're clearing their calendar, but they're also looking at what, you know, what is our new normal? Like, what are things going to look like with our business moving forward? And so, um, I, you know, I think it's going to be um, very uh, pivotal, pivotal for our clients to really um, think about how they fit into that new normal. What are some things I mean, that they're doing to making sure that they're doing that? I got to tell you, I, I know I shouldn't be peeking at my phone, but I just got a text from a <laughs> client. And the question was, did you, have, did you get my email wrong? We haven't seen anything yet. We talked to them on Friday and they're looking for candidates. So yeah. he's jumping all over me, which is great. I mean, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, and I, I'll just say, I got an email last night from an employer who sent me a link to 73 open positions they have at their company that they're looking to fill. 
So it's still happening. We're going to put that link on our newsletter this week, but uh, it's still happening. That's that's awesome to hear. Uh, I think everybody is a little concerned because you hear only the unemployment numbers or the, and, and all of that. So, yeah, but I do. But Liz, I will say we, we also have to be real, right? Mm-hmm. Because this is this is real. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are going to be some companies that are going to struggle to to come back. Some companies mm-hmm. may not come back. So, um, you know, there's some there's some real things that are going to be happening happening, and there are going to be some people that are going to find themselves, you know, um, on on the um, you know, t- it's going to take them s- some time to to kind of get back into. Um, what that new normal looks like. So I don't want to pretend that's not happening because mm-hmm. that, that is definitely happening. But, and, 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 but. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. There will have to be some, I think, additional, I call it open-mindedness on the part of the job seeker. Maybe they will have to be more receptive to that consulting opportunity, mm-hmm. that part-time job, that they may not be able to, you know, fi- financial situation may, may by itself dictate that they can't hold out for the, that one position. So they're going to have to be more open and receptive to, you know, the new world order. Right. And then it, I, I, showing you that text, I don't want to paint that it's all rosy picture because we see every day, particularly in this last month or so, a little desperation from some candidates where mm-hmm. they're firing three and four emails to us for three and four different positions where they probably don't have the credentials for those, but they're hoping that something will stick. So there are, companies that are hiring, but you, we also sense a little bit of that desperation in the market. Yeah, for sure. Would this be, you know, lots of us are talking about what we're going to do when we return to our new normal, when we, you know, we're thinking ahead a little bit and we're thinking, what has this taught us and what we might want to do differently? Would this be a good time to think about if we're not totally happy in our career? Is this a good time to think about changing careers at all? I mean, I think that's always on the table, but changing careers doesn't mean, you know, I'm changing completely, right? You still need to find something where you have the the skills, where your skills are going to fit into that. So you don't want to drastically change into something that you're going to be competing against people who have tons of um, time, you know, um, and experience. So um, if you're looking at transitioning skills that you already have into maybe something different, maybe a different industry. For instance, the the folks in the um, hospitality industry, look at those skills and see how you can parlay that into something else, right? You know how we talked a minute ago about always, I think John mentioned, always having your your LinkedIn flexible, ready to go. Mm -hmm. I think your mindset for your career should should be the same. Like always, always willing to, okay, is my compensation, am I getting paid at the market? Um, you know, it, it always be open to another opportunity. Maybe right now is not a time where you want to be out actively looking, but always have your radar up. Always be willing to talk to somebody, whether it's um, internally or externally, to, to take a different opportunity if it's there. This is a... Uh, oh, go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, I was going to say, I always advise clients to really start with their personal financial situation because that, that it really has to start there. Um, and and take a look at the the reserves that they have and the timeline that they're working with. And that really will guide them through a lot of decisions from um, the the market reality of what is happening then is kind of the the next step. And then determining if you stay in the job that you're in today, do you need to pivot, as John would say, and look at different opportunities but it really has to be grounded in reality to, to start out with. So um, I, you know, I, I think you definitely could say perhaps this is a time to, to change, but you always have to be guided by um, kind of a very practical sense of um, how long can you wait? What can you expect to, you know, to make when you're sort of done with it? So, With the financial crisis in 2008, you saw a lot of re- people return to school, to, to take mm-hmm. graduate school to to do some retraining. That's what kind of led that thought. So will we see people do that again? It looks like John's got a comment. Yeah, well, Liz, I was going to speak right to that, that point exactly, that there are a number of uh, programs out there that are free programs available through your local library. LinkedIn has a number of programs. Google has a number of mm-hmm. programs. So, if, you know, marketing analytics data is a, is a hot spot mm-hmm. right now. 
Google has a number of uh, uh, Google Analytics, Google Training. There's a number of free programs out there. So it's a good time for someone to sort of stay, take stock of, of their skill sets, where their interests are. And if they find something new or, you know, someone says, look, this, I, I'm weak in Excel. I need to work on my pivot table stuff. You know, uh, but that, those, those courses are out there. They're free. And this is a good time to uh, find those opportunities and pursue them. Tim and I did a workshop. Tim and I did a workshop last week, and someone asked the question about, you know, I've been out for a while, I've been unemployed for a while. What do I do? And I, I talked to them about filling the gap. And one of the things you can do to fill that gap on your resume is continuing professional education. There is nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't put student on your resume. Put continuing professional <laughs> education. Right. <laughs> and I mean, that that speaks volumes to a hiring it manager. Does, this yeah. is somebody who's been out of out of work, but is mm -hmm. staying relevant. Has been out of work but building their educational base. And that's a, that says a heck of a lot more to me than a big gap on a resume. Do something with your time and fill the gap. Yeah. I, I think people have kind of three things to look at when they're considering um, learning and development, professional development. And one is um, job search related skills. And that is if you've been out of the market for 10 years or so, you uh, are probably not familiar with how a job search is conducted today. So social media, LinkedIn, you know, all of that, it's, it's just a different world, um, applicant tracking systems. And so that, that is probably true for many job seekers is the job um, search skills. And then it's the job related skills. So take a look at sort of a, a gap analysis of your own skills, whatever they may be, and determine, um, either for a job that you want to return to, um, what, is, uh, you know, what is lacking in your background, or if you are going to seek a new, new job, what does that look like? And the, and the way you can kind of test the market is to actually go out there and see job postings will be a very good indication of what you need and where there might be a gap. And then the third thing, kind of going back to um, personal finances, is no matter what, you know, look at the sort of ROI on, um, on the education or the training that you're looking to pursue because, um, you know, you can easily spend a lot of money and especially in a time of um, looking for a job, figure that you have limited resources. So you want to spend your, your money wisely. And there are a lot of um, low cost or no cost um, options there. Um, for the, the job search skills, um, you can go to Skillshare, you can go to um, General Assembly. So anyway, just have to be careful on where you're spending you, both your time and your money. And your money, yeah. There's also the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act, which was mm -hmm. established back when the financial crisis happened. And so folks are able to apply for that, take advantage of some free funding and work on, to, you know, to get their PMP or, or whatever it is that you're looking to do in terms of um, uh, um, extending your, your education. So um, th there, are, there are things out there for, for, for people to use. And employers are looking for that as well. Mm -hmm. you know, employers are gonna be saying, what have you done during your time off during your job search? And to be able to say that you improved your skill set will, will be a positive mark. Mm -hmm. and, and with the Career and Networking Center being in, and being in this virtual world, how are people working with you? How are you working with your clients? You've got, yeah, how are you helping them get connected? Yeah, connected? so I will tell you that in, in uh, like four days, we literally transitioned what we were doing in person because we really do believe um, it's important to meet with our clients in person. Um, but COVID-19 changed that. So we changed everything we did into a virtual option for folks. And so we're seeing our clients, you know, um, helping them individually with uh, coaching, um, workshops that we're doing, um, accountability groups that we're doing. So we we have a transition and we have everything available to, to folks that are in need of things today, right now, we can help. That's wonderful. And, and for somebody, who's new to this, who's found themselves out of a job because of this. Um, 
walk me through what would the process would be. So they, they get to you online, and then what happens? How do they get hooked yeah. up with John and Barbara and Bruce to get all this great advice besides watching right. us on TV? Yeah. yeah, so, you know, and, and here's the reality. There will be some people who have not, you know, prior to COVID-19, they've not looked for a job in 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. So things are so different now. Um, but what they'll do, they'll, they'll attend one of our virtual orientation meetings where we go over all of our resources. And then we will set them up with an intake appointment. During that intake, they, they will meet with the coach virtually. They will talk about, you know, their process, what's going on with them, their industry, what are they looking to do? Um, and then that coach, along with that, along with the client, will create a job search plan. And that plan will um, set them up with the resources that we have. So that might, you know, client A may start out with, a career exploration appointment or a um, job search strategy appointment. So that plan will be created with the coach and the client and, um, and then we'll just kind of move them through. We'll also share with them all of our workshops, our networking groups, the other things that, that they can take advantage of. One of the services that we offer programs, what Barb and I facilitate on a weekly basis is called the job search work team. It's an accountability group. And although it's anecdotal, because we've been doing this now for a year, year and a half, our belief is that the placement of job seekers is higher when the people participate in a job search work team versus non -part not participate in one. Mm -hmm. It's an accountability group. And every week we meet, and now we're meeting virtually with our group of 12 to 15, and we ask them to do certain things. You know, Number one, track your hours of job search during the week. How are you spending your time? Spending your time working on your resume? How much time do you spend uh, uh, networking, uh, et cetera? And then we hold them accountable for goals. What are you going to achieve this week? How many reach outs? Or how many virtual copies? How many jobs are you going to apply for? And we think that that creates a structure of accountability and commitment to the job search process that are that we think and Kim can probably say yay or nay, but that we think results in a higher degree of placement. Yeah, it absolutely does. And we see probably about 30% of our clients, you know, you're, you're going to last land quicker if you are participating in a, in a job search work team. Well, it makes and sense. I will say, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Liz. No, please. I, I was going to say, it makes sense to have that structure because we've come out of an environment where we had goals and tasks and objectives we had to meet weekly, monthly, and mm -hmm. yearly. So why mm -hmm. not be accountable to the group? So Bruce? No, one of the things I was going to say, which is kind of a capstone or a foundation to all of this is uh, technology doesn't discriminate based on age. And whether you're young or old, you've got to be able to function with your face on a screen mm -hmm. and, like, and a camera in front of you. If you're fumbling, if you're awkward, if you're clumsy with it, it's going to be a bad way to start your interview off. Most companies are going to have at least one interview in the process is going to have that camera and that little green light going to be on your screen. So being becoming savvy with, I know last week, Kim had a standing room only, like didn't have enough room for the number of people that she had for a Zoom technology workshop to help people become mm -hmm. savvy mm -hmm. and not just passable, but that you know what you're doing with your, your digital and virtual interviewing um, skills. Yeah. The standing it's room funny. only virtual meeting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Bruce, funny you should mention that because uh, I think our very first job search work team group, John came up with this, I must say, brilliant idea um, that, you know, in addition, <laughs> in addition to um, going through our, our normal um, kind of routine, we went around the room and critiqued each other on how we were doing, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the new um, sort of virtual world. And it was really helpful, I think, for everyone to understand um, exactly what you're saying, that you're going, there's a whole new context to um, interviewing, to interacting, and um, very few of us have had media training, so it's not intuitive. And so, yeah, we had people with their heads chopped off. We had someone with a, a light over his head who normally I wouldn't say is wearing a halo. <laughs> um, and, you know, th those kinds of things. So um, I, you know, it was a great learning. Uh, another thing I was mentioning to people, you know, coming from an HR background was um, there's always so much um, concern about not getting feedback after uh, an interview. Gee, I thought I did really well. 
But then I walked out of there. I didn't hear anything. And I said, you know what? Take a look at what is happening while you're on a video. And you can see in real time how people are reacting. They're like, you know, John is nodding. People are smiling. Or if you're looking the other way or so that's one good thing. And you can see how you are, how you are coming across and you can Mm -hmm. sort of adjust as you go. So that's kind of a side benefit I hadn't even thought of till we had our, our last session. We're, per, we're trying to prepare people for the new reality, for the new normal mm-hmm. of virtual interview. So as one of the things Kim talked about in her Zoom call last week, you know, what's the lighting in your room? What's, what, what's behind you? How does your voice come across? Do you have enough bandwidth? Those are some of the questions that people need to figure out. But interestingly, because we're talking about virtual interview, and one of our folks in our job search work team had a virtual interview last week. And I think there were three or four oh. other people. And well, he was ready. His his background candidate uh-uh. uh, the job for team. His his background was, was just fine. But to hear him discuss it, he said, "Well, one person had their cat on their lap. Uh, what else, Barb? Uh, I think uh, someone else. A baby. Was sort of getting up. Somebody had yeah. a baby on her lap. Yeah. And so uh, that, that that welcome to the new normal, right? Uh, and so you got to be prepared for that. But at a minimum, if you are the one being interviewed. You know, what's your background? How's your voice come across? Are you sitting upright? Or is there, are you in a shadow? Just knock mm-hmm. some of that stuff off before you have your actual face-to-face interview. And honestly, we honestly we have three examples of it right here. I mean, Barb is dressed business professional. John's got a business casual look, and I've got the I'm going to Target for fake, you know <laughs> that, that look. I mean, you should, probably shouldn't wear a Gordy's pullover on an interview, but you, what you wear not a paid. Are you getting paid for that, Bruce? Yeah, I'm right. not, but. I'm not, but just because you're at home doesn't mean this is the look for an interview. You want to go Absolutely with not. what what Barb and John and the rest of them mean. Don't look at just your 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 surroundings. Look at what you're wearing as well. Right. Well, it's so important. I, I will say, excuse me, Liz. I will say I was on a call, um, a virtual uh, Zoom call, and there was, and I am not telling a story. There was a lady who hopped on the call in her bathrobe wet hair. And I just thought I would never refer you. Like you've right. just said, the, oh. you, you've set, you know, the bar for kind of how you are okay with coming into a meeting like this. Even if, I mean, it, it was with people she didn't know, obviously, but uh, you really have to look at what you're doing. And Bruce, you mentioned last week when we were on the call, the importance of even um, making some connection with what's in the background, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we, had, a, we, we, we had a candidate who was a little, a little nervous and he gets on the call and uh, the guy who's interviewing was interviewing from his home office and he had a football in the bookcase behind him and it was obviously from the University of Alabama. The guy played at Alabama and he made the connection. He's like, you went to Alabama? I played football. My father played football in Alabama too. Great way to, to start the, the conversation. conversation. Off. Whether it's saying something like the Gordy's logo or something in the background where you now have a view into that person's personal life to try and make one more connection with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't make the whole interview about the Jeep girl in the background, but but seriously, make a connection because you now have this glimpse that you would not have had if you had to go to a skyscraper up to a 27th floor and sit right. in a 10 by 10 office. So it's right. definitely an opportunity to connect on a more personal level. Yeah. I think it was Target that released that said that um, for their online sales that, you know, shirts and blouses and and tops were up a hundred percent where nobody was buying bottoms. Pants. <laughs> right. Nobody's buying pants because we're all yeah. sitting here without pants. No. That's right. yeah, not saying that at all. So as we wrap this up, um, this is a great discussion. Let's have some closing statements from folks about what you know what we should be thinking about. What are you optimistic? What should we be doing? John, why don't we start with you? I'd say there are opportunities out there. They may not materialize as fast as you would like. And that job search is a full-time job. You should be spending probably 30 hours a week on job search. Wow, 30 hours. That's a good number to, to think about. I yeah, you know, I, it's, uh, we, it's one about. of the things the folks in our JSWT, they, we, they track the hours. And we're seeing 25, 30. Uh, it was actually probably higher before uh, COVID-19. Uh, and now it's, uh, we're seeing 25 to 30 hours a week. Wow. Barbara, how about you? So from an HR point of view, I think I'm enthusiastic about um, companies investing in learning and development. Um, You know, sometimes that kind of goes by the wayside as fast as um, 
um, marketing. And so now um, people really understand that to be future ready, you, you have to invest in people. And um, so I, I think we'll see changes there. Bruce? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the best advice I could give, John's absolutely right, job search like it's your job. And part of that, the big equation for me is never stop networking. Don't, even if you land a job tomorrow, mm -hmm. never stop networking because the job you get today may be for somebody you don't know today. So never stop networking. That'd be, that'd be my two cents. Kim, what do you think? So I would just say to both employers, those who have been furloughed, visit the Career Networking Center. We have um, an amazing group of uh, business professionals who can help you in your job search. Um, for employers that are facing potential layoffs, if you have not already done so, um, reach out to us. Um, we're doing everything virtually and we're able to help in that way. CareerNetworkingCenter.org. Um, again, we can help both employers and those who have been uh, furloughed. That's wonderful. It's an incredible resource in our community and so important because a job helps so many things. When we have it a does. job in, in a career, it helps so many things. So thank you all for spending some time with um, me and NCTV and bringing this valuable programming to our community. Thank you so very much. Thank, thank you, Liz. Thank you. I appreciate it, Liz. Thank you.